I'm on day seven of self-isolation. And so far self-isolation has been okay. I've been trying to push out as many videos as I can while also trying to write some of my coursework and dissertation, which hasn't been going as well. But my flight to Moscow was canceled today. Which, to be honest, I was expecting to happen purely because of, you know, everything else happening as well. But it still sucks that it did because I was planning on going and I was planning on staying in Moscow for a while, at least during this sort of quarantine period, because at least my husband is there. And now I have to stay here and my flatmate is leaving, so I'm gonna be completely alone. So you guys are all the socialization that I have at the moment, which is me, my room and the camera. I mean, I do talk to my family and stuff, but Whatever. Anyway, today is sort of like the part two of me preparing for the 24 hour bracelet challenge. If you saw my previous video, I went through some of my followers to do's and I stole some of them to make for myself. So I have a list of patterns that I want to make. And the next video that I'm gonna be doing is me preparing the strings for all of those patterns. And then after that, hopefully will be the 24 hour bracelet challenge or maybe a tutorial or something. I don't know what I'm gonna be posting after. But today I thought I would show you some of the strings and just general bracelet supplies that I have because you guys ask me about that all the time and it has been updated since the last time that I showed it, even though a lot of the stuff is still the same. So about a year ago, I did a video where I was organizing my bracelet collection. You can find that in the card and in the description down below if you want to, it's actually pretty satisfying. Have not done that since then and probably will never do that again because that took so much effort. So so much effort and so much time. It was very, very satisfying to do and to look back on and I sometimes legitimately watch that video just for the satisfaction, but I'm not doing that again. That, that, was, that was a lot. But this is all of the stuff that I just realized you can't see it. You can usually. So I have these guys in boxes. I got these boxes off Amazon. They open up and they have like different sections here. So this string specifically, the one that I'm holding up now, is by Loops and Threads and this is the craft cord. And I have two boxes of these purely because I had quite a lot of these strings. And as you can see, there's a lot of the same colors and that's because the packs that these come in come in a sort of an assortment of basic colors. So I end up having a lot of exactly the same colors. And these are great. They're amazing strings. They are sort of twisted on itself. So it's not like an embroidery thread where all the strands are separate. These are twisted and you can see it as sort of one strand. Because of that, it is a slightly different texture and a slightly different feel to it. So if you start using this after embroidery floss, it's something to get used to. But I do mix it with embroidery floss and I've never really noticed any issues because of that. I like this. This was the first ever sort of string that I had. This is what I started off from, which is why I have so much of it because I bought like multiple packs of it. But I have since stopped using it, not because I don't like it anymore, but because I found the color choice a little bit limiting. There are quite a lot of colors and it's great for when you start off. As I said, this lasted me literally years. I just made bracelets out of that. But now that I'm making more bracelets and now that I am doing a YouTube channel based on bracelets like an Instagram, I want more of a variety of colors. So I've now started using other string types as well. Next up I have this box. I've used a lot of this and this box is consisted of a bunch of different threads But these are all embroidery floss. I stuck on all of the brand names to the box So I know which one is which but to be honest I have no idea how to pronounce half of these so just have a look if you're curious I don't really have a specific preference for the threads in this box It's just sort of all the random string that I got most of which I don't even remember how I acquired in the first place Next up we've got the plie box which is string by the brand EA. I have no idea if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but that's how you spell it. This is string that I got from Amazon. There is no particular reason why I got this string and not other string. It's just the first one that came up on the Amazon search. So I got it and I sorted it all into one box. I still have quite a lot of it, purely because there's so many colors and I just haven't gotten around to using all of them. But you can see that there are a lot of little bobbins here that don't have much string on them because I have used a lot of it also. This string is a little bit different to embroidery floss and it's also a little bit different to craft thread. So the craft thread I showed you was twisted on itself. The embroidery floss is sort of separate. It consists of separate strands that are all sort of weaved together, but as you can see, they do fray at the edges. I don't know the technical description of this, but I have a feeling that this plie thread is a little bit different. It's not exactly embroidery floss. It's much softer, it's much silkier, and I have no idea how to show this properly, but it's sort of weaved on itself. The strings, the little strands that it consists of are weaved inside each other. Now, this doesn't really mean much for everyday use. You can still use these strings as you would use the craft thread or embroidery floss. And I've definitely mixed these with the other two types as well when I'm making bracelets. However, these work best for normal bracelets. For alphas, you might run into some issues. Even though they look exactly the same in terms of thickness when you compare it to embroidery floss, I have definitely 
noticed that they are thicker. They produce bigger knots than embroidered floss does, at least for me. And with alphas, you wanna use strings that produce the same size knots so your alphas come out consistent. And I definitely have noticed that when I have the background string be an embroidery floss, for example, and then I use this for the color, it starts to widen because the knots come out much bigger. I'm not saying you can't use these in alphas, but I am saying you should be more mindful of that and maybe do a couple test runs for you because maybe you make knots a little bit differently than I do and it's not that big of a deal for you. Or you can just use exclusively these threads, like one brand to make your alpha design because then it doesn't matter since all of the knots are gonna be the same size. But I like these strings a lot. Plus they're very affordable. I got a pack of a hundred. I don't remember how much I paid to be honest, but not a lot. All right, next up I've got this Ikea thing full of string. And the string in here is a mix of all the string that I own. These are string cuttings and they are of varying length depending on how much string I had left over after making a bracelet. And the interesting thing is that you can actually see and pretty much tell which bracelets I cut the strings off from. Like I know that this purple one was one of my arrowheads. This sort of green one was also one of my arrowheads. This bundle of string is for my double arrowhead. That seems like I only make arrowheads. There's other stuff here as well. I don't use these thread cuttings for normal patterns because that just is annoying and they're not long enough to do normal patterns with. But I use these a lot when I'm making alphas and I don't need that much of a string. Before I go and I cut a new string, ruining that new string that I could have used for a normal pattern, I go here, I check if I have the color in a cutting, and then I use that. These are also really good to use in sort of recyclable bracelets, such as like the rag rug or the rainbow alpha that I did recently. I did exclusively from string cuttings and that's an amazing bracelet. That you guys seem to like that one a lot. I made a tutorial on how to do that. It's actually very easy. I'll leave that in the card and in the description as well. So definitely keep your string cuttings don't throw them away they are useful all right this is the point where people are gonna start cringing at me because I do not have a very organized system of storing my threads before you come at me I don't care I just don't this is how I store my strings it works for me it's messy but also I'm messy I just my life is messy I don't care it works for me Anyway, this has a bunch of different string types in here as well, but they're also kind of separated into baggies. Let's start with this one. This bag consists exclusively of Gamma, which is a brand of embroidery floss that is commonly used in Russia, and whenever I go to Russia, I buy a ton of this. There's no specific reason why, I just like it a lot. There's nothing really special about it either, it's just an embroidery floss. You might see a lot of Russian knotters on Instagram talk about it, it's just because it's available to them. But yeah, this is my little baggie of Gamma. I have a, got a bunch of different string that's just block colors, and, and I've got some which are sort of variated. But yeah, I got these mainly to use as background for alphas because I realized that I have a lot of different strings, but I don't have enough of the same colors to use as a consistent background for alphas. So I got multiple strings per color to do that. Other than Gamma, this entire thing consists of very, very, very random string. I've got a lot of Prism here, which I like because it's cheap and it gets the job done, but it's also sometimes really annoying because I feel like out of all of the string that I have, Prism is the one that tends to tear more often. So when I'm making a knot, it rips. Although that isn't that big of a deal. You can just knot another one in, whether that be a normal pattern or an alpha pattern. You should watch my fixing mistakes video if you don't know how to do that, will be linked. So it's not that big of a deal and it is a great value for money. But because of that, I sometimes tend to not use it, if that makes sense. There is a lot of metallic DMC in here. Look at this. <laughs> I don't know why, but I wanted to have choice and options if I ever do decide to use it, which I do very rarely because it's extremely annoying to work with, but it is very pretty. So I like to have it here. I just, this is just a random assortment of strings. There's a bunch of DMCs here as well, which are just like regular DMCs. And whenever I need a string from here, I just sort of fish around in here, try and decide what I want. I've got some DMC cotton pearl here as well, which this is black. This should probably be in the black and whites. But yeah, just fish around in here to find whatever I need. Speaking of blacks and whites, I have an Ikea container consisted of entirely blacks and whites. These are mostly Anchor, but I also have DMC Cotton Pearl, which is sort of the twisted variety. I've got some random DMC ones here and some Prism and just any black and white that I could find. The reason that it's mostly Anchor is because I found where you can buy black and white in bulk. I don't remember where that is now, so please don't ask me for links. Just Google it. But I just got a bunch in bulk, which was quite cheap. So my box of black and white. I don't know how long it's gonna take me to run out of them. It's good to have a lot of black and white because then I'm not scared to run out of it. I use black and white a lot. I also have these. 
I got this, I think, on Etsy. I don't remember specifically where, though. This is Anchor, and the colour number is 1375, if anyone's interested. This is kind of a rainbow, but it's more dark, if that makes sense. So you can see that in, like, one bundle, it goes through all of the colours of the rainbow, but it's mostly the darker colours that are visible. And then I also have this, which is pretty much the same thing, but in a pastel variety, and this is also Anchor 1335. This, as you can see, are the pastel colours of the rainbow, and these are very, very beautiful. Can you hear that? Those are foxes. <laughs> London has a lot of foxes and they come out during the night and it's currently 2 a.m. because that's when I always film. Anyway, I really, really like these. I've used the pastel ones in a couple of bracelets now. Fine. They're probably loving each other. <laughs> like, it's not fighting noises. Okay, chill! My god! I'm gonna be here for a while. Are you done? Are you done? Anyway, these ones I've used in a couple of bracelets and I've really, really liked them. These ones I am yet to use in a bracelet. Maybe I'll think of something during this bracelet challenge. I stood up for one second to go get string from somewhere else. Okay, I think they're done. I thought I was nearing the end of this video, but oh, I just found more string that I forgot I had, which says a lot about me because I still buy string. More string that I got while in Russia. I got these packs of string, which are sorted into gradients. This is by the brand Kirov, which is also just a brand that happens to be prevalent in Russia. There's nothing really special about it. These are basically just regular embroidery floss, but it's good that they're already pre-gradiented. Oh my God. Shut up, please! You know that whole, like, what does the fox say? That. It says that. I like that these come pre-gradiented because, well, they do. It saves me time. Another brand of string that I got in Russia was Cantex. I got a lot of it. I got some block colors here. Uh, I like this one because it is cotton and because there's a lot of it, I know that I'm not gonna run out. So I use these in backgrounds of alphas. But the thing that I don't really like about them is that they are pretty thick. The string itself does not mix well with embroidery floss. They're pretty big, knots come out pretty big. So if you're using them in alphas, it's best just to use these. Something like the Gryffindor bracelet that I did or the Ravenclaw, I think, bracelet that I did. I did exclusively out of these. Those turn out okay, but they do turn out really, really big, really wide and really long because the knots come out of because the knots come out really big out of these ones. But I still like them a lot. And I also have gradient stuff from this. I really like the gradient colors that these come out with. I think they're pretty cool. I've used these in bracelets before. This one I used in a normal pattern that I really liked. I'm gonna insert a picture. One of my favorite bracelets that I've done in a while. On the opposite end of the spectrum, I've got, these guys are by the brand Yarn Art, and they are of the Camellia variety. And as you can see, they're very pretty. They're very, very sparkly and really cute but the knots that they produce are tiny because the strings are very thin. I've tried making bracelets with these in the past. I tried to do a pumpkin one for Halloween with the orange. It didn't turn out super well. So either I'm doing something wrong or maybe I'll try to double it. So like fold it and use two strands instead of one. I've definitely seen other people use it. There's a bunch of bracelet makers on Instagram that use these in their bracelets. So I might reach out and ask what they do to sort of combat that, but the knots come out really small for me. So I've sort of put using these guys on hold until I figure out what to do with them. I have an Ikea bag full of DMC. This is the DMC Cotton Pearl, which comes in like a twisted thing like this. And as you can see, the strand itself is also twisted. The one that I have is number five, which is the thickness. And these are pretty thin. The knots that these guys produce come out pretty small. So unless all of the strings that you're using are the same, DMC Cotton Pearl, I wouldn't recommend using these in alphas because it can, again, make your bracelet a bit too wide or a bit too thin. But in normal patterns, I've found that they're pretty much fine. I've done bracelets, normal patterns, with exclusively this type of string, and I've also mixed it with other types of string. So I generally find that in normal patterns, sort of the size of the knot doesn't matter as much as in alphas. So for normal patterns, I think this is fine, but for alphas, wouldn't recommend mixing. Although in general, these are pretty cool. They're sort of like the craft cord in a way, and I like them because I think they're good value for money. You get quite a lot of string for not a lot of money. Although DMC can be quite expensive, but whatever. 
got another Ikea bag. I do not know the brand of the string. I got this as a gift. I didn't order it, so I'm not sure what the brand is. It doesn't say on the pack itself, but it seems to be one of those Amazon brands that you can order off. This isn't plie because I compared the tag. It's not the same thing. It's extremely similar to it though. All of the qualities are exactly the same. They are really silky. They're really smooth. They're sort of twisted. The strand itself is weaved together similarly to how plie strings are. The knots they produce are pretty much the same size as the knots of plie, so I can mix these with that. Don't really have much else to say. There's quite a lot of them. I like it. All right, so for the next part, I was debating bringing all the stuff here, but instead I'm just gonna bring the camera over there, where there's not that much light, but it's easier than bringing everything here, so. Let's go do that. So here the lighting isn't amazing, so you're gonna see my shadow all the time, but these are the Alitza yarns that I have. This one is probably my favorite, it's the black. I use this probably most out of all of them, but as you can see, I've got these giant bundles of yarn in multiple different colors. And these guys are the Alitza Sal Simlia, which are pretty big. The yarn itself is pretty big, but the knots they produce are pretty much the same size as any embroidery floss knots. So I can definitely say that you can combine these, and I have done that in the past quite a lot. I also have some of these, which are Alitza Forever Melange. These are much smaller, much thinner, and they are sort of multicolored. The knots that these guys produce are also surprisingly the same size as pretty much everything else, but also the color change here is quite quick. If you unwrap that yarn, you'll see that the color change changes quite quickly, which is good for friendship bracelets. And I have some of those in different colors. I also have some of these smaller ones, which sparkle as well. This is the Alice Forever Simli, the crochet thread. These are very nice as well. And there you go, that's all the materials that I have at the moment. My collection is ever growing, however. I am very fortunate in that I get a lot of string as gifts, a lot of which actually comes from my subscribers. If you didn't know, I have a PO box where you can send me stuff. I'm not saying you should send me string. I'm more than happy with like just a letter letting me know that you like my videos, but it just so happens that a lot of people do send me string, but also family members and friends and such give me a lot of string. I also have a never-ending thirst for more string, so whenever I see string, I do buy it, usually. I like to see it as an investment, but in reality, you do have more than enough materials, I probably shouldn't be buying more string, but sometimes I just can't help it. My closing thoughts to this video is that it really doesn't matter that much what you knot with. Of course, I'm not gonna lie, it is extremely nice to have a wide range of options and to have these sparkly strings, these multicolored strings, or like these special in some way strings, it's really cool to have. But at the same time, if you don't have access to that, it really doesn't matter that much. You might see these people on Instagram, and me included, using a specific brand of string or a specific variety of string. You don't have that and you might feel sad. Most of the time, the strings that I use, mostly random. Gumma strings, the plie strings that I have, just a random purchase that I found somewhere. The Alitza strings that I have that are sparkly, I purchased that because I have access to it. I'm sure that if you find something similar that you have access to, maybe of a different brand, it'll be just as good. There's no specific reason that I use that over something else. So don't compare yourself yourself too harshly to others and don't feel sad if you don't have access to something. For me personally, none of what I use, I use for a specific reason. It's mostly just because I have access to that. All right, that being said, the next video that I'm gonna do is probably gonna be me preparing the multitudes of bracelets that I'm gonna be trying to do in 24 hours. Things you do to keep yourself occupied during quarantine. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed and maybe got some more info on the materials that I use. I wanna thank all of you guys for watching. I hope you guys are all staying safe and I hope you're not too bored. I I do promise that apart from all of these like challenge videos that I'm doing at the moment, I will be also doing some tutorials. Before I go, I want to give a huge shout out to my patrons who have given me so much support since I launched my Patreon. And I especially want to thank my top supporters who are Zoe, Simon, Tia, Izzy M, Izzy B, Izzy D, we've got three Izzy's, Jocelyn, Misty, Sydney, Lara, Anna and Gretchen. Thank you guys so, so much for your support. It means a lot to me generally, but especially in this very troubling and weird time that we're going through, it means especially a lot to me now. So thank you guys very much for watching. If you want to see more of me, I do have a second channel on which I do more personal videos and I just talk about my daily life. I will leave that link in the description for you. On this channel, I try to post on Wednesdays and Saturdays. However, during this sort of quarantine period, I'm trying to post as much as I can. So my schedule is all over the place. I'm posting more videos than I usually do. So they come at whatever time. Also going to be live streaming this week quite a lot. I do Instagram lives a lot. So you can follow me on Instagram if you want to see that. And I'm also going to be live streaming on YouTube during my 24 hour bracelet challenge, which I don't know when will be but I will be announcing that soon so thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time bye